Welcome to the short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. In today's tutorial, we will learn about intracellular accumulations, particularly uh, about uh, accumulation of pigments. Now, what are pigments? Pigments are colored substances, some of which are normal constituents of cells, for example, melanin, where others are abnormal. And these can accumulate in cells only under special circumstances. Okay, so these can be exogenous pigments or endogenous pigments. Now, what are these exogenous and endogenous pigments? See, the exogenous pigments can be, uh, it could be in the form of carbon or coal dust. When it is carbon, we refer to it as anthracosis. When there is accumulation of coal dust, we refer to it as coal workers pneumoconiosis. So, it can be in the form of uh, injected uh, pigment in the form of tattooing, okay, where uh, it can be of India ink or uh, carbon. It could be ingested pigments in the form of uh, ingestion of uh, silver, where it is referred to as argaria, ingestion of lead, or it could be carotinemia. Okay, so what are these uh, endogenous pigments? The endogenous pigments are the ones which are derived or which are uh, present within the body. So uh, these are lipofushing, melanin, and hemocytin. So we'll discuss more about these three endogenous pigments. So we need to know that the most common exogenous pigment is carbon. Okay, it could be carbon or coal, uh, where we uh, need to know that this is uh, the ubiquitous uh, air pollutant present in uh, most of the urban areas. Okay, so when there is accumulation of carbon, we refer this to as anthracosis. When there is accumulation of coal dust, we refer to as uh, pneumoconiosis. What happens here is that you know these pigments are picked up by alveolar macrophages okay they are picked up by alveolar macrophages uh, and they can be deposited within the parenchyma of the lung or they just go into the regional lymph nodes so you can expect pigmentation in the parenchyma of the lung or pigmentation of the regional lymph nodes so what happens in anthracosis is that this is what you are seeing here if you carefully see that these black lines okay so these are the black streaks in between the lobules of lung beneath the pleural surface they are due to the accumulation of the carbon and they are anthracotic pigments so microscopically this is what you see you can easily make out that these are anthracotic pigments okay so these pigments are seen within the macrophages in the lung parenchyma okay so whatever these black pigment what you're seeing is uh, is actually present within the macrophages now uh, coming to the uh, endogenous pigments, they are uh, as I said lipofuscin, melanin and hemocytin. So let's understand what this lipofuscin pigment is all about. Okay, so lipofuscin is an endogenous pigment, it's an insoluble pigment, it's also known as lipochromar wear and tear pigment. It is otherwise uh, referred to as aging pigment. Okay, it's derived, uh, the word lipofuscin is derived from the Latin uh, fuscus which means brown. Because the, the, the color of the pigment resembles brown, it is also uh, referred to as brown lipid. It's basically composed of uh, polymers of lipids and phospholipids in complex with the protein. The presence of lipofuscin is not injurious to the cell. The presence of lipofuscin is an evidence of free radical injury and lipid peroxidation for that particular cell. Okay, So in microscopy uh, or in microscopy sections, this lipofuscin pigment appears as yellow-brown, finely granular cytoplasmic, which is often a perinuclear pigment. Okay, It is seen in the liver and heart of aging patients or it can be seen in patients with severe malnutrition or in the cases of uh, cancer, cachexia. Okay, This is how lipofuscin pigment looks under microscopy. Okay. These are pigments which are yellow brown, uh, uh, which is seen around the nuclei. That means it is perinuclear accumulation of these pigments, which is yellow brown in color. Okay, so it can also be seen in the parenchyma of the liver. As I said, these are again yellow brown pigment present around the nucleus, are perinuclear in location. Moving on to the melanin pigment. Melanin is uh, the word melas is a Greek uh, word which means black. So this is an endogenous non-hemoglobin derived brown black pigment. We need to know that this is the only endogenous brown black pigment which is derived from tyrosine. This is formed when the enzyme tyrosinase catalyzes the oxidation of tyrosine to dihydroxyphenylalanine, okay, which happens in the melanocytes and the dendritic cells. So what are the disorders of melanin pigmentation? It could be hyperpigmentation or it could be hypopigmentation. When uh, in hyperpigmentation, it could be generalized hyperpigmentation or 
localized hyperpigmentation. Generalized hyperpigmentation is often seen in the cases of Addison's disease and cloasma. Okay, so the Addison's disease means it's basically a primary adrenal insufficiency or hypocortisolism where you can see generalized hyperpigmentation of the skin. So this is what you can see. You can easily make out that the knuckles are uh, dark in color. This is a characteristic feature of Addison's disease. The second one is cloasma where uh, it's often observed during pregnancy where you know there will be hyperpigmentation of the skin it could be uh, skin of the face or the nipples or the genitalia this is basically under the influence of estrogen sometimes cloasma is also found in women where uh, um, they uh, take oral contraceptive pills moving on to localized hyperpigmentation these are uh, one k folate spots okay these are the pigmented patches these are the pigmented patches as you see here these are the pigmented patches which you see often in neurofibromatosis okay the second one is putz jagger syndromes where there is characteristic perioral pigmentation you can easily see that there is pigmentation in the lips and perioral region the third one is melanosis coli which means there will be blackish discoloration of the entire colon or the part of the colon the last one is uh, quite common as we all know that these are the navi navi and even malignant uh, tumors like malignant melanoma these are the localized hyperpigmented areas okay now moving on to hypopigmentation hypopigmentation can again be uh, generalized or localized under generalized only one thing which comes in mind is albinism albinism is the extreme form of generalized hypopigmentation where there will be no formation of melanin at all and that is because of deficiency of the enzyme tyrosinase okay so this is how uh, the albinism uh, person looks like localized hypopigmentation is the most common example being vitiligo where you can easily make out that these are the localized hypopigmented patches now moving on to the last endogenous pigment that is hemocytrin okay hemocytrin is a uh, hemoglobin derived golden yellow to brown granular or crystalline pigment okay it is one of the major storage forms of iron where hemocytrin pigment it actually represents aggregates of ferritin missiles hemocytrin is a ferric iron uh, plus 3 charge ferric iron small amounts of hemocytrin can be seen in the mononuclear cells mononuclear phagocytes of the bone marrow the spleen and the liver which are actively engaged in red cell breakdown so what is this excess of iron excess of iron is um, it can be referred to as hemosiderosis hemosiderosis can be a localized hemosiderosis or systemic hemosiderosis okay localized hemosiderosis means where uh, the hemosiderin is deposited in the macrophages it could be in the epithelial cells or the alveolar cells whereas systemic hemosiderosis means that the hemosiderin is deposited uh, in the organs like liver pancreas kidneys and all those things okay now, what are the examples of localized hemosiderosis? The most common example of localized uh, hemosiderosis is common brewery. Okay, so which means that the, this this particular type of uh, localized hemosiderosis develops whenever there is hemorrhage into the tissues. We know that whenever there is an hemorrhage into the tissue, there will be lysis of RBCs. Once there is lysis of RBCs, hemoglobin is released okay so hemoglobin is liberated and that hemoglobin is taken up by the macrophages and in the macrophages hemoglobin is degraded and they are stored as hemosiderin okay so this is an example of localized hemosiderosis systemic hemosiderosis means it could be in the form of uh, acquired hemosiderosis where the most common ones are hemolytic disorders it could be in the form of blood transfusion or even iatrogenic okay so it could be hereditary hemochromatosis or where there will be increased absorption of iron and thirdly uh, whenever there is increased or excessive dietary intake of iron so in these conditions we can expect systemic hemocytosis the deposits of uh, iron in the liver produces grossly you know dark chocolate brown color okay that's because of the pigment in the liver microscopically uh, this iron pigment appears as you know coarse golden granular pigment lying between the cells cytoplasm so these are the uh, coarse you know golden and granular pigment present within the cell you know, around the nucleus this microscopy you know um, it demonstrates the presence of iron by a special stain and this special stain is uh, pearls prussian blue stain 
This is a case of a chronic venous congestion of lung where you can easily uh, see that there is a presence of hemosiderin laden macrophages in the alveolar lumen. So these basically are the macrophages which have engulfed the hemosiderin which has accumulated as a result of breakdown of RBCs. So that completes this short topic on accumulation of pigments within the cells. We discussed about uh, exogenous pigments in the form of coal dust, ingested pigments and uh, injected pigments. And endogenous pigments, three important endogenous pigments we have discussed. One is uh, lipofuscin, two is melanin and three is hemocytrin. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to uh, know more about this topic as a PowerPoint presentation or if you want to download more and more topics, you please visit this website ilovepathology.com and please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Please do share. Thank you very much.